the North American LCS, and happy birthday, America. I'm Rivian Bills in the third, and with me for our first three games of the day is Joshua Jat Leesman. We're going to be starting things off with LMQ versus Cloud9. And thinking back to our last Super Week, back in week one, LMQ yeah. was the only team to go 4-0. Yeah, and they were so good that week. But since the early surge, they've actually shown a bit more struggle to close out games. Teams are really starting to adapt to the way LMQ plays, especially with LMQ's early aggression. And now while they're still tied for first, the league's gotten tougher because remember, they right. were in first and now they're tied for it. So they have to be careful because they're technically only one game away from potentially falling into fifth place. So now midway through the split, 14 games in, they almost have to refocus themselves to get back that dominating edge. Yeah, and on the other side of, of the coin, Cloud9 have been trying since the start of this split to recapture the spark that made them the preeminent team in North America. Yeah, and Riv, what's most astonishing about Cloud9 is that they've had the most trouble when facing the bottom three teams. They've yet to win against Complexity. True. They're one and one against Evil Geniuses. But then against the top four teams, they're five and three. So what gives there? This week, they've got a tough schedule and actually face the entire top three of the North American LCS. So it is an opportunity for Cloud9 to turn their season around. And if they go 4-0, there's no way they do not reclaim first place. Right, and Cloud9 say, LMQ is the full package. Or to borrow from Taylor Swift, I knew you were trouble when you walked in. Cloud9 always has um, the best team decisions. When I see them, I just see them as a group of friends who are really close with each other, and they just have incredible synergy, and they've shown it throughout and throughout in the past. C9 is our or one of our primary scrim partners, so we know them very well, and I think they know us very well. The consensus is that we have like a mental block on them, which is not true at all. I just play to win, and I don't I don't fear any player or any team. We're 0 and 2 right now. We're C9, so and both of those games we threw with our massive lead that we had. We got lucky maybe like once or twice against them, and they chose to do a bad push or a rotation, and we outpushed them or out rotated them in that instance. So if we can keep that up, we'll likely be able to do very well. I think the weakness right now is that the meta for them isn't favored, and that's because uh, highest champion pool has been slowly dwindling, and you know, Soraka has been taken away, LeBlanc has been taken away. All that's really left is the unnerved champions, which are like the APs from back in Season 2, which is like Orianna and like TF. So players who did really well in Season 2 are going to get stronger again. But Hai is a Season 3 player, and now that his champion pool is gone, it's going to be tough for them. Yeah, one of the strangest struggles we've seen from Cloud9 this time is they're the team that normally adapts so quickly, right. actually seems like they're a little slow trying to pick up the new stuff. It's different. They're not really fighting for a first place spot here. It's always what you hear behind the name of Cloud9 and someone else in the top tier. Right now, we're going to check out the starting lineups and see if these teams can get back to that top spot. On the blue side, it's LMQ. Ackerman in the top lane, no name in the jungle. Xiao Wei Xiao in the mid lane with Vasily at AD carry and more, as usual, behind him on support. And on the red side, of course, it is Cloud9. Balls in the top lane, Meteos in the the jungle, high in mid, sneaky on AD carry, and of course, Lemon Nation on support. And you know, to, to keep with high here as we jump into champion select, something Cloud9 and both LMQ are known very well for is that you look at high's champion pools, Link was saying, it's kind of dwindling, and Xiao Wei Xiao has only been showing us more. Yeah, we really have to echo what Link said right there because it's just so interesting here with Cloud9 being the way they are. Yeah. Uh, all the champions that high has played have been taken down. So he's put in this really difficult position where he has to learn so many new champions, and he's always been the type of guy to play champions right at the top of the meta, or even yep. set the meta in right. North America. And that really just has not been the case this, but for Cloud9 as a whole, there was a game last week where they were blue side, and they banned Kale. Yeah. Normally teams force the red side team to ban Kale right there. So it's a little bit strange of Cloud9. I almost expect them at this mid-season point to kind of turn that around and start playing a little bit differently. It, 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 you'd think it was, it'd was it be different from the start. One of the teams we know to be the fast or the quickest at adapting in previous yep. splits. Yep. That's why they were the champions. Now seem to be faltering a little bit. A lot in the beginning of the year that hit him up with High being off for a while and his sickness now back with the team, but it hasn't seemed to be able to recuperate, especially with the patches just tacking yeah. on. I mean, yes, they've been back in the LCS now for six weeks. That's a month and a half, maybe even a little bit less. They were playing without High for a month. That is a substantial amount of time to change the dynamic of a team and then to get back to it. Also coming in facing different teams than what they did previously beat and split. A lot have gotten stronger. A lot of the lower teams able to beat out those higher calibers this season. So the bands are finally through and a lot more mid laners than usually, at least from last week, are coming through on this one. And Lulu 
Looks to be a first pickup. Yeah, LMQ's previous victory over Cloud9, they had the top lane Lulu. Mm -hmm. It's been a favorite of Ackerman, especially leagues around the world, more so even Korea. It's a very common ban for Lulu because she is right in that top tier of top lane champions. But the very interesting thing about this is Kale was not banned right. and then was also not first picked. So this could be LMQ looking at Cloud9 seeing the Cloud9 blue side band kill last week. Wow. And saying, we want both. A little bit of homework. It's going to be the Twisted Fate with the Evelyn right away. So looking to get a bit of that gank pressure coming in for Meteos. He did get a win on Evelyn last week. His first game off Lee with that win. And looks like on the other side, Shao Wei Shao goes for the Syndra. Immediately. Very strong lane control there. Yeah, he wants to bully high clean out of the lane. Yeah. Something Shao Wei Shao is very good at. So now the only way we see a Kale is if Balls has added it to his champion pool in the top lane. And just based on the way the last few weeks have been going, not seeing Kale in the pick or the ban column for a game is very unlikely. Wow, a lot more Kog'Maw has been coming out as well if the protection can be there with him. We've seen a different variety of builds that we'll go over as we get into the game, but Corky quickly locked in on Vasily's side, already knowing he just needed an AD carry, but what are they going to be bringing into the jungle here? They did have the Jarvan before. They need something to lock down a composition that, albeit doesn't have that many dashes or ways yeah. to get out of a Cataclysm, so it could work. I will say right off the bat, though, Cloud9 is picking much more quickly right. than they have in, a, point. in the past few weeks. It's very much back to the old fast pick and go Cloud9 that really just sprints through a champion select. Oh, all right. The There's Uga. another point we were going to be yep. talking about is Balls' champion pool as well. Three champions throughout the entire summer split so far. This will be number four. And it's still a little bit strange, honestly, because Balls was seen as the premier top laner in North America, far and away, yeah. head and shoulders above everyone else. Easy in, to say. In yeah. gameplay. Used to be. But this split, he hasn't really played the new breed of top laners. No Gragas, no Lulu, no Kale. And instead of jumping, to one of those three, he jumps back in time and picks the Nunu, who was huge at the very start of yeah. the spring split. Moon, right. But against Lulu, Mundo is a solid pick in the sense that he doesn't necessarily get bullied out by Lulu. Yeah. Lulu doesn't have the kill pressure on Mundo because he has so much health. Uh, it'll be an interesting choice, but yeah, no kill. We'll see what they do before the game gets underway. Let's check your predictions here after seeing all that. According to LRLEsports.com, it's 55% of you saying that Cloud9 are going to be taking the win, but that's going to be moving around. Yeah, make sure to keep those votes coming throughout the game because we update it during the game. Tweet either the hashtag LMQ or the hashtag C9 to the at LOL Esports Twitter account. Then we get that sweet little graph on the screen that shifts back and forth. Yep. You'll see it, because you can participate in it. So not seeing Kale picked or banned at all throughout this game. Xiao Wei Xiao bringing out another new ch unique champion pick for himself on Syndra. And to highs TF, something he wants to bully out immediately. They they didn't even have to really ban against high and mid. Yeah. Just kind of forced his way down to TF. High has always been a player who can play TF, but he's never really seemed to be a god on TF, if that makes sense. Cloud9 will use it for the tools that... TF brings, but not really much beyond that. He's been playing it actually ever since the promotion qualifier in 2013. Mm -hmm. That's right. Made it in Way back in the day. We'll see what he runs it. Is the Flash Ghost? It is the Flash Ghost, as usual, to stay safe. We'll see what kind of pressure he can create throughout the game on Twisted Fate. Haven't been too many plays onto that, but one of his best has come from ATF. Cloud9 really looking to pick up some pace throughout the season. It has not been the same for them, and it's almost a situation where it's, they can't find the mistakes they're doing wrong. Yeah. It's just the wins don't come as easy. The wins just aren't coming. So much of what Cloud9 was doing in the previous splits was almost majestic in the sense that they would just find ways to win every game in the mid game. Even if the laning phase didn't go right, they'd find a dragon fight and just dominate it. This split, oh man, Good actually, pressure. They don't have much damage. kill pressure. They're trying to force a flash or a collapse. If they keep getting slows, they got a flash and it's for got sure. A flash. Nice. It says red card. You're out of the game. <laughs> <laughs> so ward down early, easy vision going in there. They don't even have to really work for that, and they get a flash out of it too onto Ackerman. So there may be a return there coming from Medios early in the game. They got some time to work with that. Looks like they aren't going to do anything different, but a lot more wards coming out here for Cloud Nine than usual. Mm. A lot in the river. 
Yeah, and the one ever important deep ward. Note that that mm. deep ward placement isn't matched by LMQ, which will create a fairly large vision imbalance in the early game. Additionally, because of the Evelyn jungle, not knowing where Eve starts makes the lanes substantially more dangerous for LMQ. We'll see how they coordinate that. It's going to be really up to No Name, captain of the team. Keep Late invade. Get out of smart mind on it. Sneaky, trying to get a bio arcane shot over. Looks like he takes a little bit back as well. It's not going to be an easy matchup for him in the beginning if Vasily can keep hitting those Foss Bombs with the sustain of more on Nami. Seeing a lot more play come from Nami and a lot from Kog'Maw. And they are game yeah. changers in their fight abilities. Yeah, having no sustain in that bottom lane for Cloud9. I know we talked about the 4.10 80 carry changes in depth last patch, but we mm. need to continue to hit on it. Because running Kogma here in a non-sustained lane, especially when Sneaky took some of that preemptive poke before the lane happened, means the Vasilian Moor could actually look to aggress a fair bit in the early game at the risk of an Evelyn gank. Because remember, they don't know where he started. Nice pressure from Vasily hitting every time Sneaky's trying to go for a CS here. With Morgan pokes in as well. They're going to be able to control this. A lot of the damage from Cloud9 comes from this bottom lane. It's almost the lane they look to get their wins from. So if Lemon and Sneaky can't get a hold here, it might be tough. Yeah, look at Sneaky. Already down his health potion. Mm -hmm. It's halfway ticked through and no good way of sustaining up. So that is a lane that very much has to hug their turret for a while. Yeah. Something that will diminish the lane pressure a fair bit of Cloud9. Here comes Classic Cloud9. Can they get Balls and Meteos back in the game? It's a lot of minions. They know Flash is down. Yep. Flash is still more than half down, so they could do another repeat on this one by pushing Ackerman out. Getting very close before he even throws it down. Isn't going to have the Burning Agony, but they have all the damage they need. The repeat was made. Coming up with first blood on his balls. That was nice. That was a really nice gank. No Name's going to try and actually yeah. answer this. Uh, with a bit of counter jungling. To get back to that gank though, this laning setup and the fact that Dragon Gold was increased last patch and Cloud9's had another patch to kind of adapt should be a boon for Balls and Meteos because it is very much a throwback to when they were so dominant together. Isolated lanes for Balls where Meteos can do what he wants in the jungle because he's not sharing anything and make things happen. But now they're vulnerable to potentially this dive. It would be so, so dangerous. I think it's they're safe. Definitely LMQ pushing a little bit if they went in that one fully. Possibility of losing the double buffs on No Name and even more. Good choice to go back, especially High getting pushed in middle. See if No Name can find something on this attack. Yeah, he's spending a lot of time deep within the jungle of Cloud9. He's probably hoping to run into Meteos at some point so he can take him down a peg or two in health. There's the oh, scout there weak. They are gonna get what oh. they wanted out of that one. And No Name makes it out easy. Xiao Wei Xiao taking the initial bit of damage and Meteos just in the wing, not in time. That was so clean yep. by LMQ right there. It's the Syndra pick straight into the TF without hesitation. Xiao Wei Xiao knew exactly what to be able to do to him. Oh, oh my! Flay into grab. Makes it a little bit easier there. Vasily definitely has to rethink, but they get the ignite out. He's not really in a lot of HP zone though to get back into that kill pressure. Gotta be careful. Yep. Moore is going to be trying to sustain. Unless they land yeah. another hook shortly, that harassment Ooh. is going to be for naught. But to get back to that mid lane gank, yeah. High is going to be in a lot of trouble now. The isolated 1v1 lane against Cinder when Cinder gets going is not exactly easy to come back from. Xiao Xiao is a dominating force. LMQ themselves knowing that they needed to make a move and made it happen. Flawlessly, just textbook work coming in the mid lane. Hold that back against Cloud9 and don't give Meteos or Balls the edge. You see Meteos going towards that top lane. It's not something he's been able to do lately. Usually him and Balls are roaming around the jungle together. So it yeah. might help him as well. Trying to clear out this pink ward. Ackerman actually came back to lane with this, making sure he could stay safe, but they thwart that right away. Yeah, I mean, Meteos got rid of the ward, sure, but that was one gank thwarted by Ackerman. Yep. So the ward, in a sense, was worth it. He has to go back to base now because uh, it was gone, but this means Xiaowei Xiao can continue to be aggressive oh. on high, and means the bottom lane of LMQ can continue to be aggressive onto Sneaky and Lemon. And this is very much the way Cloud9 used to play, in a sense of their lanes were always a little bit better and always pushed up, but the fact that they were all in that space made it so that it was safe, because right. if they went to gank, they'd lose something elsewhere. Here's the gank, let's see what happens. They have to make this work, Chad. It looks like they're gonna get some good damage onto Lemon, but can they finish it high with the great walk roam down? Doesn't even have Destiny up. They needed to do that with the CS discrepancy in the lanes. 24 CS, and I don't know how long that turret's gonna last, because Meteos has gotta be careful about holding this. He doesn't even wanna 
reveal himself in vision range at the threat of getting jumped on by two people. This turret probably has to be forfeit. Cloud9 seems like they're making have to make moves right now. Yeah, they lost a huge wave in mid. High picks up a bit from the bottom. It's it's really give and take right now. And it definitely take more from Cloud9. Yeah, I feel like LMQ won out substantially in that trade. Just the map control they've already gained because their lanes are pushed up. Now the fact that the middle turret, the most important turret is down. It allows uh -oh. roams like this to happen. Already control over the map. Seven minutes in the game. Xiao Wei Xiao has broken the mid lane with no name, and they get another kill from the roam. This map is already theirs. Yeah, where is the pressure going to come from from Cloud9? Twisted Fate isn't even level six no. yet, and they've already done two turret dives to Cloud9 that are successful in kills. Still have a dragon fight to come up, but that's what LMQ is also looking for with the amount of fight prowess that they have. More coming back to mid lane, and they're so on top of it, you see the rest of the damage dealers able to be roaming in the jungle while the support is guarding mid safely. LMQ's got C9's number on this. Yeah, they are the ones with the big advantage right now, pressure-wise on the map. And it's that early aggression that really shocked a lot of the North American LCS when LMQ came in here. Mm -hmm. Cloud9 has not been able to respond to this game. Picking Twisted Fate so early, uh, they got to be able to play a little bit more defensive or survivable. Right. Getting that early dive onto high is backbreaking. And the Mundo pick, it almost hurts a little bit because you have to make sure he gets that kill so he doesn't get dove. But to kill Ackerman, Ackerman in the beginning, he can still wild growth someone later. And yep. LMQ made everything work for themselves on the other side of the map. The Mundo is very much a late game pick as well. I mean, looking hmm. at Cloud9's team across the board, they are looking to make it to late game. So yeah. it makes sense that LMQ is making these aggressive moves early. It's just a matter of how well can Cloud9 hold them off until then. And early on, one and a half thousand gold, including the mid lane turret, yeah. which is cannot emphasize enough how important that mid lane turret is. It means LMQ is very much winning this race. And we also see both AD carries kind of popping that phage in there. We see a Triforce coming in for Kog'Maw's pretty often. Give a little more safety in the speed. And Sneaky knows what the trouble they've been having in this lane and sustained facility gets. They're going to need the chance to get away even faster. Easily freezing this lane in front of the turret. 62 to 45. Balls is doing his damnedest to keep a little bit of CS in his favor in the top lane for the team. Yeah. It was the early game ganks mm -hmm. that gave Balls that edge. But Mundo won't be able to come in and make an impact for yeah. quite a while. Doesn't have boots yet. Yes, he still has the teleport. But like the dragon fight is down. It's going to be a lot of damage on a high. Red card doesn't help you. So much harass. He goes down thinking he can stop Xiao Wei Xiao just out of range. The ultimate's enough. And they're going to be looking at another turret. Definitely feels like high is tilting a little bit right here. Right. Not being able to pull gold right there. It was a very time-sensitive gold card because he knew the ultimate was mm -hmm. coming from Xiao Wei Xiao and he still wanted the flash away. But he burned his flash. Xiao Wei Xiao did yeah. not. And it's not like the Cinder ultimate's on a oh very Oh, my long word. Time. Here comes that roam. Where is there to run? I, they can only go so far. They get the TP coming down to where the lantern was. This is going to be balls. Oh, no nice team TPs. should go down here. But the rest of the team also converged on this for LMQ. Great front end damage coming from Cloud9. Makes LMQ think twice. But not Vasily or Ackerman. They go headstrong into the fight. Lemonation and balls now. Balls not even getting attacked. And he's finally able to just do some auto attack and cleaver damage. Meteos on the backside trying to 2v1. Cloud9 he's gonna does do not want to give this fight up. Xiao Wei Xiao answering back. That blue buff is on him. Regenning his mana. So he's got, they have to be careful about the crowd control and damage he can put out. A great hook by Lemon Nation, and they start to reconsider oh, man. what they can keep doing. Balls with the kill there. He says, I'm tanky enough. Still, no, his ult is down. So he has to be careful the crowd control. A great fight from Cloud9 on LMQ trying to get a little too much. That is the turnaround that Cloud9 wanted. And Riv, things got a little bit crazy right there. It was another attempted gank there by LMQ. Things might not be over yet. Where are you going, No Name? What you gonna do? Oh! He took it back to base. He just wanted to let him know that he was there. Uh-oh, that's a ward. Got gold the card. gold. Gold card game. Huzzah! Oh, that doesn't help? <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's a few hit -ups. Marshall Cadence just dropping High's health down for one more attack. No Name makes it out. We're gonna watch this craziness once again. Yeah, notice how it actually turns into a 5v5. <laughs> Ball of Teleport comes in first, and a very late response by Ackerman. Yeah. If Lulu would have matched him right there, the first kill wouldn't have necessarily happened. Then 
Notice because LMQ is so split up and Cloud9 is together, the turret is zoning out a lot of LMQ from this fight. Every time they flash back over the wall, they couldn't make it back in for the support of the fight, which allowed LMQ, uh, it allowed Cloud9 a lot of stick right. around kills. And considering they are the better late game scaling team, that fight definitely bought them some time. What it did not do is actually give them any map pressure back because they lost the turret yeah. amongst all that and they're still down on gold. We'll see what they can keep doing. Sneaky can get a few more kills under his belt and finish that Triforce oh. up. He can definitely put out some big damage for the team at these dragon fights once we get it. Two more minutes on that and it looks like LMQ already has that warded up and they should. They can control this far in. They're good to go on pink wards back there. Meteos is in flank position, but he does not have his ultimate up for about 20 seconds. It would have been perfect as far as a team fight happens, but they're just waiting on the timers, and now he's killing a pink ward. Yet another turret given up. The map pressure just doesn't exist for Cloud9 right now. Let's see if LM. Wow, he actually did not. No, crap too much that. fear. Yeah. Right? They know that in a 4v4, especially without balls right now, who is holding oh. the most gold of anyone on their team, a fight without Mundo is not an actual fight they want to engage on with the DFG on Xiaowei Xiao, it very quickly becomes uh, an odd man fight because yep. he will kill someone instantly. Cloud9 looking for an opening here. We haven't even really seen a destiny on the terms of Cloud9. They've kind of been an answer to a fight LMQ has started. But we saw Cloud9 somewhat able to answer that fight just recently. Yeah. A minute left on Dragon. Maybe they can do it again. It was some really good global pressure mm -hmm. by Cloud9. They have to be very careful about the way they craft their global usage in this game. And LMQ will have learned a lesson about overdiving turrets against this team. But at the same time, there's not many turrets left to dive because they've eliminated two mid lane turrets, really using Xiaowei Xiao as an absolute powerhouse in yeah. mid lane to dictate their movements. And now with that DFG, it does somewhat telegraph LMQ strategies. We see most Cinders actually go for an Athenes followed by a Death Cap, which gives them more overall team fight damage and sustained wave clear. But Xiaowei Xiao is, is very much trying to close out the yeah. game right now. The early Deathfire Grasp looking to kill one person right away and then take objectives. So it'll be very interesting to see how he uses his combo in fights. Well, it seems like Sneaky, a good surge of power for him. Maybe these pushes LMQ will have so strongly on the turrets. Could give Meteos an in right now at the Dragon. It's not really going to do battle. much for him. The poke battle indeed. And it looks like Ball's able to do a little bit more for now. Waiting for Xiao Wei Xiao's attacks. There they go. No name. Big ult. Hit four inside. They're all forced to at least two or three to flash out of that. Trying to turn around. They're getting hit from all the way on the outside. High is able to take down Ackerman with some wild cards. And it looks like they are reassessing this one. Another set of wild cards hits onto Vasily. But more sustain is there. And his mana bar is very low. Bottom. Ball's going in. Throws down the ultimate. Xiao Wei Xiao forced to flash. Levination hits another great hook to continue a fight for the team. Wow, very close. Ball's getting over the edge. No name almost locking him up. The timing of Xiao Wei Xiao in that fight saved his life. High teleported into a spot and was instantly killed by a Cinder Orb. But overall, that fight was in Cloud9's favor by a wide margin because there was no DFG combo pulled off by Cinder. It does not stop here, though. Ackerman is coming oh, back. Man, Ackerman's into the fight. His ult is down, but he's still able to provide quite a bit of damage. That's going to be a hurt balls, but he will be in the fight still with the team. Throwing cleavers from the outside. Can teleport and get back in. It looks like he will try to do just that as he backs it blue. No mana on Sneaky. W is free on Kog'Maw, though, so he can still pump out damage. Lemonation does not have enough health to, to help here, but Meteos does have Flash and Smite. How quickly can High make it into the fight? Also, Ball's healed up to full in the midst <laughs> of this, plus his ultimate's coming back off cooldown. This may be Cloud9's Dragon. Yeah, Ball's is good to go. His ult is just up right oh, now. Oh, wow. Huge damage to Xiaowei Xiao. They also get Vision out of that living artillery. Ball's wants to go very far into this one. Dodges the bubble. Gets Ackerman and throws down the Burning Agony, but the team says, call back. We got Dragon. Let's get some map control. What a battle that was, Riv. That was a two-minute Dragon fight, pretty much. And the initiation looked great from No Name followed by the Tidal Wave. But LM couldn't dude. follow, and Ball zoned out Xiao Xiao. That's the biggest thing here. He wanted to DFG ult someone, but could never make it into range because of the presence of Mundo. Watch the DFG by Xiao Xiao. It actually comes out right at the end of the fight <laughs> with no damage. So the combo was not used. It allowed the fight to extend, Balls to heal up, and zone them out. The important thing about this, though, is watch the high teleport as Xiao Xiao times this bubble and orb. We're not that. Go. I saw <laughs> No Name coming over. Yeah. Just saw a lot of particle effects. <laughs> <laughs> so
So we'll see how the game continues to pan out. Cloud9 clawing their way back from a huge early game map control from LMQ. And they seem to do a damn good job. Within 1,000 gold at 16 minutes in, it's almost even. Nobody really has a double set of core items over anyone. So we're still looking at a fair fight from both sides, but three turrets for LMQ. Going to give them a few more options, like warding this far into the jungle. Yeah, this is a really awesome battle right now mm -hmm. because it's LMQ with the early game map pressure and Cloud9 desperately trying to hold it off with one incredibly strong tank that if he gets going, there will be no way LMQ can deal with it. He will just stand in front of the Syndra and yeah. keep her away from any of the squishy targets she wants to combo. But it, it is anyone's game right now because it's very easy if Cloud9 loses a fight to lose an inhibitor and then never get back the map control mm -hmm. versus if Cloud9 can just get a few turrets down they will slingshot them themselves ahead in gold and then have the superior team fight. Something that Cloud9 can still do once they find their way on that path. They can hold it and get to the win pretty textbook style. Right now, Ball seems to be getting a huge amount of HP under his belt. And like you said, to be able to stand in front of Xiao Wei Xiao, you can build magic resistance for that. You yeah. have enough health, it's not going to matter. Mundo against double AP compositions is like a Mundo's dream in a lot of ways, especially when you consider Corky yeah. as primarily magic damage. Warmogs, Spirit Visage, and maybe even a Banshee's Veil with yep. Mercury Treads afterwards. He will just be completely untouchable and it will be so difficult for LMQ to get their damage through the Mundo if Balls continues on this current path. And so many words coming from Cloud9 just due to that last entry of LMQ in the top side. They want to control that map. They want to keep Balls split pushing and farming. They also want to know where LMQ is. Right now, LMQ's found the dark side of that map, and it looks like they have some free roam over here. No longer getting the blue, yeah, which Cloud9 turret. has somewhat recuperated on, but they're still, they don't have the map pressure they need. Yeah, this turret looks like it's going down. Cloud9 is going to try and trade a mid lane turret here, but they have to be careful to not lose their inhibitor turret. LMQ does not hesitate within dives, and this could be the breaking point we were talking about. Five turrets to zero. If it gets much worse, doesn't think like Cloud9 can come back. They can't even really get up to the turret. A siege wave here with LMQ on the inhibitor turret, and they're taking it Cloud down to nine half health. Is not Matt back is in going time. to go down. Meteos actually throws down the ultimate, and it looks like they're forced out somewhat. A very indecisive set of attacks coming from Cloud9 there. They get one top lane outer turret amongst all that and give up two turrets in their bot lane while exposing their inhibitor. You do not often see a team come back from six turrets to one. This is one of the games where it's a possibility, but Cloud9's cut more close. Simple abilities for the Flash. Xiao Wei Xiao showing his strength in this game. 4-1-1 one, and one with a 20 CS lead right now. 30 CS still in the bottom lane. And Ackerman has caught up after the gank in the early game and has now surpassed the uh, ball CS. 148 to 140. LMQ out of champion select. Really looks strong, and now they're making yeah. that composition work especially with the map pressure. Yeah. So trying to put our heads around this gold lead right here, like where is the gold coming from? One thing that ended up happening is Lemon Nation never built a gold item on Thresh. It's very common for Thresh's to rush Sightstone, but Thresh generally scales better in the late game with his utility. The Nami build right here will naturally have more gold because he's gotten about 630 gold from his Spell Thief's Edge item that no gold generation item was built on them in Nation. But then you also have to realize, High's Twisted Fate has gotten 550 gold from his passive. So all that farming kind of evens itself out, meaning the turrets for LMQ are pretty much not even enough to give them a gold lead. If we just factor in the team fights and the overall farm, which looks like it's in the yeah. favor of LMQ, it's actually not necessarily, because Videos has gotten so much more farm than No Name, and those jungle creeps do add up. Hopefully Meteos can start making some plays, start getting some side swipes onto LMQ. He's going to be hard. He can easily focus their crowd control onto him. He's not on his favorite Lee Sin. 62 in those turrets, 20 minutes into this game. LMQ definitely reconsidering a little bit here. As C9 grabs map control, grabs a lot of wards to be putting out as well. The ball's built the Mercury Treads as well to combo with the tenacity that his W will already give him, meaning that uh, he will definitely try and go where he pleases, more so than usual. 20 seconds on the Dragon. We're looking at Triforce to pick Axed and Triforce to Cutlass between the 80 carries. 
Watching where Balls focuses his damage on Xiao Wei Xiao and trying to crowd control here as Cloud9 looks to set up for another dragon yeah. they could get. Oh, double pink wards by LMQ, about a waste of 100 gold there. Uh, the great dragon battle of 21 minutes all about to happen right here. We already had that two minute dragon fight earlier. Mm -hmm. And one interesting thing about this is LMQ's rush down a turret lane isn't as easy this time because they've already killed so many. So it's really all about the dragon right here and whether they can catch people out of position. Ball's caught with Ignite! An instant second of miscommunication is exactly all it needs for LMQ to take down one of your champions. Death, fire, grasp, and the Ignite on the balls completely crushes them that fight. If Cloud9 would have been standing behind him, giving him a Thresh Shield potentially, that may have been enough to keep him alive and then turn the fight around. But because they were so disorganized and so fearful of anyone but balls being caught off, they overexposed him as a member of their team. And now the Baron Rush. This is LMQ trying to close the game. Very coordinated fights as well. Moore using his Ignite on that one. Xiao Wei Xiao saving it. Continuing his kill pressure and potential. Level 12 in this game. He is tied up with high, but at 30 CS ahead. Getting that needlessly large rod recently. Nice shots from Sneaky. Still has to be careful on that range. Xiao Wei Xiao. Xiao Wei Xiao is somebody that is one of the only along with Shifter uh, that has a double digit kill score. Yeah, in two games. Yeah. From the mid lane. He is definitely one of those guys that can go off. And some of these have been solo by himself too. Yeah. He's, he did a number on high early, but since then, uh, he has had some struggle maneuvering around the map and keeping yeah. himself safe. There's a lot of long range artillery shots that come in. Woo! Well, that's what, for the Lantern. I think that could be the only thing that LMQ has as kind of a uh, caveat against them, is that sometimes they don't go with a well laid plan. They'll go in and they'll do very well, and then they'll kind of say, okay, we can divert from that a little bit. And that's yeah. where it goes wrong. A lot of their biggest criticisms against themselves is exactly that. They have those set strategies for every team. But we have to remember, LMQ is still a young team. Mm -hmm. They did play together throughout the entire Challenger series, but the LCS is a whole nother animal, playing in front of the crowd, more pressure in every game, knowing that they, while they are tied for first, they are one game back from being in fifth, yep. which is a monumental difference. And knowing they're playing against teams that have much more North American experience, a lot of times it is a little scary when you think of something on the spot and say, this could work better, to just abandon the strategy you've spent a yeah. week crafting. Something that LMQ has done a little bit in the past. This game, though, it seems like they're trying to stick to it. They have a very good lane domination composition. Yeah. They have used it to build into some nice turret control. And if not for a few bad team fights, they would have rolled right. over Cloud9 in this one. Trying to get back into organization for that. Cloud9 as well, doing a little bit better with each game that we see. Their adaptability is somewhat coming around. We see High this game having a little trouble pushed back onto Twisted Fate. But it seems like they are keeping the idea of late game in mind, so they're not diverting from that. Still have that in their sleeve. 2K gold, that's what we're looking at right now for Cloud9 to make up. Still a fight could be in their favor. Looking to see the Zanyas finished up on high, how couldn't possibly make some plays for himself. Yep. Aegis of the Legion as well. The mobility boots on high are a very curious choice for Twisted Fate. They're just looking to rotate a little bit extra in this game. Maybe try and stall at this game. Knowing they're down so many turrets, they got to be able to move real quick. Pops GF out because they're worried about a collapse, but it's just going to be down Lucky now. Them. Lucky then. Where's he going? He's going for something. He's going to be going straight. Going nowhere. Nowhere. <laughs> I got all excited. I was like, where's it going? I heard it. Shall we shout? Yeah, it looks like they could be able to get this. They don't have too much danger to be working with. Smite goes down. Meteos is going to grab that. Wait, wait, no name coming from the other Not side. Fight for He's got to be quite careful. A very nice tide away from the backside, and Cloud9 rides the wave. If from over the wall, Sneaky can hit great shots, but it's not able to be followed up by any other DPS. Now Cloud9 starts to reset the fight, and they look at LMQ now in the Baron Dance, which probably won't happen. Yeah, the positioning of that fight looked bad for LMQ because they funneled themselves into Twisted Fate, AoE cards coming through them. But once again, they blow through Balls' health bar, which yep. is 
really impressive. Most teams don't put their full focus on Mundo, which allows him to run away from a lot of fights at 10 and 20% health. But LMQ is fully focusing him, using the Deathfire Crasp of Xiaoli Xiao for the tank, not necessarily for a squishy. And it is working Ooh. really well in these fights. Sneaky looking real big right now. Almost another shot on Living Artillery. Blade of the Rune King Triforce Corgi build, in, or Corgi build, Kog'Maw build. Been seeing that quite a lot lately. Actually coming out of Europe as well. Looks like he should be able to grab this with a bit of turret damage, but they need to pick this up, be able to open the map. And now they can pressure the side turrets, possibly get a roundabout gank going down. Eight to nine, Cloud9 pulls through on the kills. They're still down in golden turrets. Yeah, it is a... It, it remains to be a fascinating game right now because both teams are really attacking the other team's main strategies of winning. Cloud9's big plan was to have balls get... Monster on Mundo and then face tank all of what LMQ is right. saying. LMQ is saying, that's not going to work nope. because they're easily killing balls in a lot of these fights. Not enough extra protection on top to keep the Mundo alive. And that's really eliminating the Cloud9 front line and letting LMQ still go where they want. But at the same time, gold is close and they're still a little bit vulnerable. Yes, they need a safety to get themselves back now, knowing that is down. LMQ may start to pressure a little bit more. Yeah, Baron control is really dangerous for Cloud9. Right they do not have sufficient vision nice. in the Baron area. They're using those limiting artilleries to scout as best they can. Man, if you got that hook on Shao Wei Shao, it could be what they wanted, but everybody's a little split here. Teleport coming in. Doesn't look like they'll be able to activate anything on this, but they get balls where they want him in the fight. Missing the really? cleaver. Good disengage from LMQ. They just kind of watch Cloud9 bring it to the bring it in. The Tidal Wave disengage is a little surprising. Mm -hmm. They're still trying to catch them off guard. It's all about finding the right position for a fight. Sneaky. Vasily gets head up. AD carry on the front side. High flash is over. Tries to get Vasily immediately. Throws down the Zanyas and Cloud9 to put themselves in a sticky situation now. But they've done enough damage to change the mind of LMQ. Now going to be Ackerman trying to whimsy away from the fight. And Cloud9 is going to focus on the push. Jungler for mid. What ends up happening right here? It looks like LMQ got pushed dragon? off the fight. So yeah, they're going to end up going here because they know they pushed off LMQ. And they want to just keep the goal close. Yeah. And give Sneaky enough time to power up even more so. Really interesting fight right there. The Baron's going to be a choice after this as well. Just getting back to that, because Cloud9 still has net vision. Hi goes crazy, right? Yeah. Once he pulls I that card. I need to watch card. when Xiao ultimate came out right here, because it looks like... Where is he going with it? Throws bound a ball. Yeah. He threw it on balls again, but yeah. that time it didn't finish him off. So that was not the full team focus, which shows you the potential threat of Dr. Mundo right now. And he's also stacking more <laughs> magic resistance, the Spectral's Cowl, yep. into that Banshee's Veil quite soon. I think everybody's about to have themselves a Banshee's Veil. They're on sale, apparently. Yeah, it's 190 magic resist on balls. But you also have to remember, the Locket of the Island Solari is going to be giving an extra 20 oh, yeah. Yeah. to him. So in team fights, he should be sitting around 210. He's a big boy. Yeah, and no Void Staff yet onto either ability power cast of LMQ. So this is a moment in the game where he should be quite strong. And <laughs> it looks like Xiaowei Xiao actually is getting that Athenes just a little later. He's gonna build that as his third item. So an Infinity Edge onto Vasily now, and the last Whisper brought in from Sneaky. Interesting build. They can just start on the Baron while Nona is playing with yep. the red buff. They kill it much faster in Cloud9. They have had such lackluster vision control with other vision tools to help them. They would have to pile in here to stop this. Medios very close. That's going to be going to no name. And now as they assess what's going on, elimination wards, and they're out. Nice, decisive calls by LMQ. That has really been... Really ahead of the game. It's their calling card when they're good. Mm -hmm. It's how quickly they can go for objectives as a unit. The one thing that amazes me is even after the fight in the bottom lane, they, they stuttered a bit when they lost that, but they didn't stop with their original strategy and plan. They yeah. just found the next turret they needed. They took down an inhibitor turret, which in both games, Cloud9 and LMQ have played. LMQ has taken the first inhibitor. So they're on par to do that as well. Yeah. I have to keep going back to what a game this is, though, because yeah. LMQ has shown so much control in this one, yet... They have had those few bouts of over-aggression that have allowed Cloud9 to pick up these 10 kills and maintain a close goal game. With the Kog'Maw reaching late game and the Mundo, I feel like I'm saying it too many times this game, but it's <laughs> still relevant, even with mm -hmm. LMQ's dominance. It is one team fight away from LMQ from winning because of the built-up map pressure advantages. But there could be a point in this game 
if it reaches there, if LMQ was unable to break the inhibitor wall right. here or get a clean team fight, the Cloud9 would come back, making this push so much more important. It's happening the way it usually does for Cloud9 too, if they were to bring it back. Sneak is the one doing most of the damage that coming from the bot lane. So Cloud9's feeling very good about the situation in that terms. But right now in front of their base, they're a little hesitant here. Ball's taking quite a bit. They can't really get the full amount out, can they? No Ignite has gone down yet. Three ultimates, rather two ultimates used out as he is forced to use his to get a bit of HP back. Doesn't seem like they really want the fight because nobody's getting anything out of it. Yep, not a good start to the push. The lockdown is gone for them right now. And they just have the threat of Shaoi Shao's ultimate, which is still very high. Oh, yeah. Let's not forget that. If he catches anyone but balls, it would be an instant kill. Well, everybody's staying on the back side. Ackerman now as well. That Lich Bane was his second item. He's been destroying structures in the top lane and now to the bottom with the team. LMQ again. Grabs in first inhibitor against LMQ, yeah. or against Cloud9. And that's the best inhibitor in the game mm -hmm. to take, especially when the Baron comes up again, because it is the hardest one for Cloud9 to defend right. while the Baron is happening due to the distance difference between Baron and that inhibitor. Very strong play. And eyes on the bottom lane for LMQ here to start the game after Ball's got a gank in the top lane. No Name spent some time in mid and in the bottom. Now LMQ and the rest of the team back to mid Blanket. on the back side. It's going to be the teleport in with the Zanyas on to Twisted Fate. Do they have enough focus though once they come out of this? No, it's going to be Meteos going down to an Ignite. That was Moore's and it looks like Xiaowei Zhao as well. Actually, Xiaowei Zhao's Ignite was down. Moore also used his, so they're out of summoners. They're somewhat running from this fight, but they can still kite backwards. Ackerman trying to put out some free glitter lances, and they'll be safe on this. Baron buff help him stay in regen, and LMQ for a one for one. Jeez, considering the initiation there from Cloud9, fighting against the Baron buff is just a display of how yeah. close this game actually is. The damage from Xiaoi Xiao as well, not even using his DFG and just melting Meteos as he ran away and ended up dying to that ignite. Right, let's take a look at this again. It was the classic flank attack, five man evil, making a massive shield on Meteos, and he still died with all the damage coming out from the rest of the team. Uh, and then you can just see the disengage from LMQ, the move speed granted by both Nami and Lulu were just enough to get away with a few dodged cleavers or missed cleavers, depending on how you want to look at it, coming in from balls. Game continues to be close. Old school Cloud9, it seems. Things are working. They just cannot get it to go all the way forward. Balls is getting to that point where he can run into any team fight. Yeah. But the it's rest funny. of the team isn't on par with that. Right? It's funny. They're old school picks, but a very different right. play style for Cloud9. They are not normally the team trapped in their base, trying to win and stall the late mm -hmm. game. They're the team that wins the game in the mid game and doesn't care about late game most of the time. But even so, they're in a position where the game's probably about 50-50. Well, these teams are 50-50 at one win apiece so far in the summer split. They're looking to break that apart right now. Looks like LMQ is really ready to do that. Heading towards the top side. Doesn't look like they want mid just yet. Ackerman's gonna be giving some hell up here. Balls now onto a Thorn Mail. He is a complete boss tank this game. Uh-oh. Another initiation comes in. Whee! Uh-oh. Ty's taking a bath Shall right now. Shall. Sneaky gets hit up. Do they have an appeal for the rest of the team? Cloud9 is looking every different direction right now, but Sneaky, he's got his eyes on the kill. More kills coming in for the rest of the team as Sneaky was just shredding them down. Moore's going to be going down on your right side. Ackerman's going to be going down on the left side. And like you said, Jet, this game is amazingly close. Yeah, because there's also super minions beating on Cloud9's base while this is happening. That's the fight they wanted, though. So, so close. Uh -oh. They need to run back and defend that thing. Uh-oh. Come on, Sneaky. Few more shots. He doesn't see him. Come on, buddy. Spawn. No. Oh. oh, my gosh. He saves it. It's going to heal. Don't worry about it. Woo. Psh, easy. Deep breaths <laughs> across the board. The reason Cloud9 was able to win that last fight was Good mainly thing. shutting down Xiao Wei Xiao. They get the gold cards done on him and never let him Ooh. into a position where he can succeed. Balls also had great flank position from the back, meaning LMQ was worried about the Giant Mundo and could never focus on Desiki, diversifying the threat properly there and having LMQ being scattered. This could be the thing that turns around the game with the inhibitor being back up, the Baron being on the way, and Cloud9 having some time to get vision control back. 
Plus, Sneaky, uh, he's hit his breaking point as well. So I watched that again on my other screen. Yep. And third time's a charm. What third time's a charm. Shao Wei Shao threw a ball down instantly to break High's Banshee's Veil so the bubble would work. Mm. Like, they timed that better than it could actually be timed, if that's a thing. And even so, it did not stop the gold card, which is the right. most important thing amongst all of that. So crazy. High, quick fingers from both sides. Almost got the Zanyas out in time. 16 to 11, 36 minutes into this one. Longest one between these two teams is 47 minutes, so we got some time before they break their own record. We're gonna have it going down the mid lane for Cloud9. A nice Void Ooze kind of puts LMQ in the wrong oh, spot. That wow. was a great play from oh, Sneaky wow. to see that. Good job. This is mid turret. Yeah. Easy. Looks like that late game team is kind of becoming late game. It's hitting late game right now. The inhibitor goes down right there. And still no Void Staff on a Shao Wei Shao. Ball's picked up more magic resist amongst this. This could be the fight right here. Oh, the one side, great box. Nobody can get through that right now to get the rest of the team. You see, and No Name has to go around the outside and Cataclysm Ackerman almost gets hooked up. Balls is going deep into the fight on this one and Shao Wei Shao is gonna be going down. Did they just end the game? Almost two fights in a row? Moore's got like Meteos all over him. Those are gonna be the wild cards that High needs to take him down. Meteos stays up this time. They're onto the Nexus turret. It's gonna be 40 seconds on three members and Cloud9's looking to win. This is it. Cloud9 makes the stall and takes down LMQ 37 minutes in. The first time Cloud9 gets their footing, they take the win. Wow. Not the way you expect Cloud9 to take down LMQ. Oh, the way holy. these teams normally play, you would think a very early clash of teams fighting over every early objective. Yet this time, Cloud9 was able to win, at one point being down six turrets to one. But they had the late game strategies, they got Mundo big enough, Kog'Maw did enough damage, and High withstood the barrage of power from Chow and Chow. Cloud9 walks away victorious. What an amazing game for Cloud9 to keep their heads in, understand that it was going to be the late game that they needed to work on. That game kind of, like we said, they've been having trouble adapting. Those were some season, last season picks for them. They didn't yeah. have to do too much adapting. They just had to wait for their late game play. Very smart moves there. LMQ coming out so strong. Maybe yeah. a little too strong in the beginning. Thought they had enough room to play with. And that's when C9 took over. Yeah, if we just have to look back at what happened to LMQ and how they were unable to close that game, I mean, being up six turrets to one yeah. is normally enough. But it was as aggressive as they play, the moments where they went a little too aggressive, which is right. what always crushes them. The turret dive, they ended up to be a 5v5 at the start of the game. And then yeah. really some slightly shaky play in one of the first big dragon engagements were the things that just gave Cloud9 enough time to come in. Those last few team fights, yes, they still could have found a way to come out on top, but yeah. the damage had somewhat been done up until that point. A lot of focus in those fights, thinking that they could take down balls before he got there. Because, like you said, they just wanted to win. The Athenes wasn't yeah. there from Shao Wei Shao. He was going straight damage. They wanted to be able to kill everything. Balls had like a surge of gold that yeah. faked them out that one fight you're talking about and everything went wrong. It was a really interesting progression because the Deathfire Grasp was working for Shao Wei right. for so long, taking out that front line again and again. Yeah. But then because the Deathfire Grasp into Death Cap, once he established a certain level of magic resistance and there was still no Void Staff on the other side to cut through, not to mention some smarter fight planning by Cloud9 to attack from multiple angles and not just present the one target. Yep it ended up turning the tables. So LMQ and C9 now 9 and 6 a piece with yep. that win. Cloud9 starts to move themselves back up. Yeah. It's going to be pretty crowded up there probably at the end of today. It's pretty crowded <laughs> as it is right now, but I mean, Super Week is going to be when teams differentiate themselves. The problems they've had up until yeah. this point in the season, whether or not they can solve yeah. them this week will be a big factor in how they move towards the playoffs. Halfway through, here we go, starting the other half. Head over to Twitter and share what you thought were the standout moments and by tweeting us at LOL Esports and be sure to use the hashtag LCS Big Plays. Right now we're going to send it over to Dash and Zyrene at the analyst desk for more on Cloud Nine's win. All right, thanks, Riv. We're joined by High, who's just come out of an exciting third game. Now, you guys, that's the third slugfest you've had with LMQ. The first thing I'd like to ask you is, what is it about that matchup that always makes it so contentious? Well, 
I got destroyed that game, like, more than anything in the world. Like, I, I really hate TF and Tissinger if they have, like, a jungler that can, like, tower dive you, like a Jarvan or, like, a Lee Sin. It's, I, I can't live. I don't know. Maybe I suck, but whatever. Um, they, they like doing aggressive things. They like trying to control the early game, and all three games against them, they've basically had the early game against us, and that makes the game very hard for us to control just because they have control of mid and the jungle just because I got pooped on. <laughs> so that makes the games hard when they have control of the game. So so coming into that, do you guys just pick champions that scale a little better? Like, What's it like coming into champions like versus LMQ? Right, so we when we had that team comp, we knew that we would scale well, and our early game was a little bit lackluster because we have TF and Mundo. While they're okay, they're not the strongest, so we had to survive and get to that end game where they can't kill Mundo. So we fell behind more than we should have, but we got to the end game like we wanted to, and what did they do to the Mundo? He had like, what, 4,000, <laughs> 5,000 health? I don't know. Yeah. With like 300 something MR with no Void Staff. Who's gonna kill him? Absolutely. Well, so that being said, the point about the Mundo, was that a call that was made after that initial level one engagement where the flash was blown on Lulu? Hey, we're gonna look top for an, uh, an initial gank at that uh, Mundo rolling? Well, I have three more games this weekend. Uh, hopefully they didn't see that, but yeah, it's, it's a thing that's like doable just because he's like the most obnoxious level one champion. He's kind of like an Ezreal, but he slows you as well. So with everyone doing a split, that's pretty good to do. And I guess since people saw it, it's not really hidden anymore. But yeah, it's kind of cheesy, but it worked. Yeah, and you guys actually have a really good team fight presence that game. And LNQ is known for their team fight. And we're going to get a replay here. And I want you to walk me through this. It's the first dra uh, second dragon of the game where you guys end up walking away uh, on top. All right, so this, this went really well for us because Balls and Sneaky were hitting a lot of poke before the fight. And so was I. We, we get the kill on Jarvan, and I believe later on I teleport in and suicide. But we get a good team fight just because no one can kill Mundo, and we get a lot of poke off. We kill Ackerman, and then no one can still kill Balls. And he ultimates and he heals for full. And I'm pretty sure I suicide, which I shouldn't be doing, but... Uh, we, we get Dragon off this, and it's a very... It's, we only won that fight because we got to poke him before the fight. Had we not been in Dragon before it spawned, and we didn't poke him, they would have taken Dragon and probably snowballed that game from there. So the fact that we were set up for there and got the poke off, that got us a dragon. Yeah, one of the things I want to point out there is the fact that you guys hadn't quite hit the same item thresholds that they had had. There was a DFG on Syndra already, and there was a completed Triforce on the Corky as opposed to Sneaky only having the Phage and the Sheen. So it just speaks to the positioning and the team fighting prowess of your team. Um, now, moving on further into the game, we, uh, around 19 minutes, there was an interesting decision made as uh, LMQ kind of pushed down the bottom lane, and we watched uh, Mundo take and trade one turret for both an inner turret and an in inhib turret. What was the thought process that went into that call? So we were trying to bluff them and see if they'd actually go for the inhibitor or not, because we were pushing top and mill at the same time, but they kind of took our bluff and pushed the inhibitor, and we kind of got punished for that. We didn't make it in time. We lost that turret, but that was... Just a bad call, honestly, from me, so, yeah. Well, there was a great call later on in the game. I'm going to get another replay up on your screen. It's the ace when that bottom inhibitor was taken, and we have super minions pushing into the base. What happens here, Hi? Walk me through this. Okay, so I believe I saw Corky and Lulu tap, so I'm calling, hey, let's jump on this. And I have Banshee's Veil, so I don't instantly die in this team fight, which is amazing. So we flank them from four or three different sides. Their priority target is Wei Zhao, and we kill him at the start of the fight. So no one can kill Kogma at this point in time. He's the strongest member on our team by far with Mundo. And the fact that no one can kill him, he just gets free reign over everyone. Just because Syndra was in a bad position and doesn't have Hourglass, she built full damage and she gets punished for that. Whereas I went two defensive items like right away, so. All right, so coming out of a fight like that, right, where it, I guess you were behind maybe about 2k gold, but winning a giant team fight like that, knowing that you're a late game scaling team, what's, how did the mindset change? As the leader of the team, what is, what is it that you say to take control of the game? Hey, we're going to win this. We're going to take advantage of it. Well, when we won that team fight dominantly, we obviously knew, hey, we're really strong right now, and we got that free dragon afterwards. At that point in time, I knew Balls was like a god. I knew Sneaky can't die. He didn't even burn Flash that fight, and Syndra did. So the next time the team fight happens, I'm going to pour on Syndra, and whether I die for her or not, she's going to die, and no one's going to kill Kogma, and we should win the next team fight. So off of that, we knew the next fight would be the end gaming or the last fight of the game. All right, and final question here for you, Hi. Great game today, and later on you guys have CLG today. How are you guys preparing for that matchup? So they play the next game, I believe, so we'll be able to watch what they do. And hopefully I don't feed as hard as I do this game, because that would make the game much better. But... Uh, 
Yeah. That's my <laughs> game plan, not to feed so my team doesn't have to carry me as hard. Well, that's not a bad game plan. Again, yeah. thank you so much for the insight. Good luck in your game later today. Yeah. Now, don't go anywhere because we've still got more games coming your way. After the break, it's back into the action with Complexity versus CLG. Keep that browser where it's at. I'm flanking, send your right here, right here, right here. Yo, yeah, I can get these two, I can get these two. Done. He's gold carded. Over here, over here, over here, over here. Round the way, round yeah, the way, coming round the way. Around. Round the way, round the way. Coming around. You over here? Yeah, I can I can go long way. Can careful, go? careful, careful, careful. careful. Cinder's no flash. He's yeah, coming long way, he's gold carded, he's gold carded. Yeah, I'm gonna go kill Cinder. Okay, okay, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, he has no stun. Can you get it? Yeah, 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 dude, I'm taking it. Cinder's gonna try to kill someone, careful. Get her? Yeah, I got her. Yo, yo. I can go. I'm gone, I'm gone. She's done, she's done. Hooker, hooker, hooker. Can we kill her? Kill her, kill her, kill her. She flashed, she flashed, she flashed. Flash. I got him, I got him, I got him. I got him. I'm slowly in Corky. I'm slowly in Corky. Yo, I'm on Corky, I'm on Corky. Corky, 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 Corky. Nami, Nami, Nami. Nami driver, Nami driver. Bob's good. Slow, slow, slow. I slowed him. I'm gonna flank this side. 